In this review, I want to give you my honest opinion about Active Campaign so that you can decide if Active Campaign is the right email service provider for your online business. Because when I got started with email marketing a couple of years ago, I chose the wrong email service provider and then the wrong email service provider again before I found Active Campaign in 2017 and I've been using them ever since. So needless to say, I really like Active Campaign, but there's also some things I don't like. So I want to talk about both of those things. So let's just dive right in. So this is what I want to cover in this review. So I want to talk about what Active Campaign is actually good for, for who Active Campaign is, the most important features, how easy it is to use, what support is like. I want to talk about pricing, pros and cons, and my conclusion. So let's talk about what Active Campaign is actually good for. So I think one of the biggest mistakes that online businesses are making that just get started with email marketing is that they maybe have an email list and then they just send out an email every once in a while to try to get people engaged. But what is really cool with Active Campaign is that with all the automation features, you can basically create a whole automated experience that consists of a series of emails that are sent at set intervals or when the contact performs a certain action. So I will also show you an example of that in a bit, but you, for example, could deliver a lead magnet. And then as soon as they open that email, you can send a follow-up email. And then the next day you could invite them for maybe a free email course. The whole free email course can also be automated. It's like, it's really crazy. It's super cool what you can do with it. So yeah, basically instead of manually sending an email every week, you have a series of pre-written emails that are automatically get sent to new subscribers. Now then, for who is Active Campaign? So I think Active Campaign can basically be used by any kinds of business, but I think especially online businesses really benefit from an email service provider like this. So Active Campaign, I think, is really the right choice for you if you really want to automate big parts of your email marketing and you want to create an automated experience that nurtures leads and convert them into customers. So some people also call this a funnel. And if you're like me and you really love to nerd out on automation, so especially automation is super big, so many cool possibilities there. And I think it's not a fit if you only want to send newsletters once a week. I think there's just much simpler and cheaper tools for that. And if you're buying email lists to send spam to, then Active Campaign is really not the right choice for you. And if the sole purpose of your emails is affiliate marketing, because they have some policies uh, about that, you can read it on this page. I've also read links out to this in the description below so that you can read it if you want to. But basically, if you're an affiliate marketer and the only purpose of your emails is affiliate marketing, then Active Campaign might not be a good fit for you. Now, then I want to talk about the most important features inside Active Campaign. So I think the first one, the biggest one, is automations. So with automations, you can automate the whole experience. So I have two examples over here. So here is an onboarding automation. So this is an example of an automation that could be sent uh, or start when somebody is submitting a form. So you see over here in the top, we have our triggers. So when the trigger happens, then the automation will start. So in this case, that is when the contact submits a form called checklist. And then what you can do is you can build out your whole automation like this. So you have your blocks by clicking these pluses, you can add blocks. You see that over here, pretty cool. And you see over here that we have then an email that's just like, hey, here's your checklist. Then we have a wait action. So we wait until something has happened. So in this case, we wait until the contact has opened this email or click the link inside this email for up to two days. So that means that as soon as they open it or click a link inside it, they will continue right away. And otherwise they will continue after two days. Then we have an if else. And if else basically allows you to split the automation based on a condition that you set. So the condition over here is has opened this email or click the link inside this email. If not, now what you can do is you can automatically send a follow-up email that says something like, hey, did you see the checklist? I've sent it to you two days ago, but I noticed that you didn't open that email yet. Something like that. Then you could add another wait until to also wait until they opened this email maybe. And then if they either open this one right away or then this one, then it will continue over here to the yes path of the if else. And then you could maybe send a little onboarding series of like, hey, this is how I'm going to help you. Uh, this is my story. These are my biggest learnings, something like that. So it's really simple automation, but super, super effective. Then another one that I wanna show you 
is an evergreen newsletter. So instead of having to send out an email every single week, what you could do is you could pre-write all your emails or use some old emails and then just put them in your automation and then just send them out every week, for example, every Tuesday. So this is the automation I'm using for that. So someone subscribes to the main list, then we wait until the current day of the week in the context time zone is Tuesday and the current time in the context time zone is 10 a.m. So it's pretty cool that you can select here like, hey, I want to do this in the context time zone. So you see that over here, current day of the week, context time zone. You can also say current day, day of the week in uh, my time zone. So I'm in Europe, uh, Amsterdam time zone. So then you can also send it or that, but because I have my audience in different parts of the world. You can also do like this, that you say like, hey, when it's Tuesday, 10 a.m. in their time zone, then I want to continue. And then I want to send newsletter number one. Then I want to wait a day. And then I want to wait until the next week, basically, until it's Tuesday and 10 a.m. again. I send my newsletter and so on and so on. So this is just some simple examples of automations. In a bit, we're also going to build one automation from scratch so that you can really see how these automations actually work. But so yeah, yeah, that's definitely my favorite feature of active campaign the second favorite feature i think is conditional content so let me show you an example so you see over here that we have an email and what you can do with conditional content the name basically already says it you can make pieces of your content so like bar graphs blocks you can make them conditional and then show them based on a condition that you set so you see for example here in the top that i have hey first name so like hey john or hey, hey, but I obviously don't want both of those things in my email, right? So what I can do then is I can put these in different blocks, like you see that over here. And then you also see this little text that shows up over at the top, you can also go here, manage conditions. And then you see that this block with hey, John will only show up if the first name exists. And the second block will only show up if the first name does not exist. And then you see over here, I have a little text that says like, hey, thanks for joining the list. Glad you found me in this little corner of the internet. Here's the cheat sheet you asked for. And this text will only show up if the subscriber is actually new. So if the tag exists, event, or see a recent activity joined list. So there's a tag that I add to people who just joined the list. So then, because I have different lead magnets, different content upgrades, then only this uh, little text in the top will appear when they're actually new. And if they're already on the list for a while, it would be silly to say again, like, hey, thanks for joining the list. So then we just say like, hey, John, here is the cheat sheet you asked for. So it's just a simple example, but you can really use conditional content to really hyper personalize your emails also maybe based on segmentation data. So that's really pretty cool. Now then the email builder, yeah, I basically just showed you now I just clicked it away. So let's go back over there. So the, this is the email builder inside Active Campaign. You have two different ones. You have a HTML builder, which is really pretty simple. You just write your HTML and then on the right side, you will see a preview of your email. And then you have this one. So this is the, what you see is what you get builder. So you have your email and then you can just drag blocks inside your email. You can also here add an image or you can maybe add a number, another image next to it. So this is all pretty easy, I would say. The HTML builder is a really solid choice if you know a little bit about HTML because it's a little bit more of a bulletproof way of styling your emails, but this way is also really, really fine. And then over here, you have a little menu of uh, this, you can like duplicate a block, you can make it conditional, you can hide it on mobile devices, you can even save it to your content library so that maybe if you have another email, you can also reuse that same block. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, then you have campaigns inside uh, Active Campaign. So you have automations and you can have emails inside your automations. But what you can also do is you can also create campaigns. So let's quickly go over that. So here we have campaigns and campaigns basically allow you to send one off emails. So instead of automating it, you can also just say like, hey, I have something that I want to share with my list. And then you can just create your campaign. You can give it a name. You can say like here, I want this to be a standard email and then we go next and then you can say like okay this is the people i want to send it to this is the design i want to use this is the email that i want to send so i have to say i'm not using this so often myself because i really like to use emails inside automations but the feature is there if you want it 
Now then the next one is landing pages. So with Active Campaign, if you want to, you can also create landing pages, which is pretty cool. So you can just go over to site pages and then you can create pages and it looks a bit like this. So you just have like a template and then it's like a what you see is what you get builder. You can just like drag in different blocks and just style it at content and then use it as a landing page. So that's pretty great. Now then what you also have is a site chat. So they call this conversations. And this is basically an add on. I will also talk about that in a bit when we're going to talk about pricing, but for I believe 19 bucks a month, you can add a site chat to your website. And while I think the site chat is maybe still a little bit basic, I know that they're still developing it and like adding new features to this because it's just new, but it's really cool that it's there and that you don't need yet another tool for that, that you can just have this inside Active Campaign and also that it obviously integrates so nicely with Active Campaign. So yeah, that's the most important features, the features that I like to use uh, most. Then what I want to talk about is how easy Active Campaign is actually to use. And I think this is really important to talk about because some other email service providers, they're really hugely complicated, overly complicated packed with like lots of features that you maybe don't need. And then you need to spend weeks to figure out how to create maybe a simple automation. So with Active Campaign, I would say it's medium easy to use. So it's not super easy, but it's also definitely not difficult. There is a bit of a learning curve to understanding what everything is for, but with the help of some YouTube tutorials, I also have lots of tutorials here on YouTube about Active Campaign that you can check out if you want to, you should really be able to quickly figure out how to build your first automation. So what I want to do is I want to take a couple of minutes to show you how you can create a form and then how you can create an automation that is connected to that form. So let's do that real quick. So we're going over to Active Campaign, and then we go here to site. And then the first thing that we do is we're going to create a form. So here, create a form and then I call this one Active Campaign cheat sheet and I call this V2 because I already have another version about it. And then you can select a form style. So in this case, I just want an inline form, which is basically just like a little embedded uh, form that you can use on your page. But there's also a floating bar, a floating box, a model window. And then uh, what you can do is you can select an action. So what happens when somebody is submitting this form? So what I want to do is I want to subscribe them to a list. I want to subscribe them to my main list and then I click create. And then you see by default that the form looks like this. I don't think this is so super nice, but it's really easy to change. So I, for example, like to get rid of this text because I will just do that on my own website. Then I get rid of this. And then I also want to disable the branding, for example. So I just turn this off. Then instead of the full name, I want to ask for someone's first name. So I go over here to standard and then first name. I drag this one in here. And I also want to make this required. Then we go to options and then here the form action. So we subscribe someone to a list, right? And then you also have your opt-in options. And then one thing I want to do is I want to disable the double opt-in. I can just do that in an automation or automatically unsubscribe people uh, when they're not engaging with my emails. Then I click save. And then we basically already have a simple form and then you can also style it with things if you want to. For example, here uh, we could make the button uh, yellow. We can make the text in it. Uh, black, something like that. And then you can also use some custom CSS if you really want to go deep and like really style this to your own needs. And then you can just click integrate and then you get a little code that you can add to your website and then the form will appear. I'm not going to do that right now because I think it really depends on how your website is built, but I'm going to click save and exit. And now we're going to create an automation that will start when somebody is actually submitting this form. So we go over to automations create an automation. And then we say here, start from scratch. We click continue. And then it will ask us for a start trigger. So what needs to happen before the automation starts? So here we say, okay, submit a form, click continue. And then we select the form that we want to start with. And then you can set it to either run once or multiple times. And if you set it to run once, then even if the contact um, fills out the form multiple times, then our, the automation will only start once. If you set it to multiple times, then if the contact submits the form for three times for some reason, then the automation will also start three times. So I will leave it to once and I click add start. 
Then it will ask us for a first action. So what I'm going to do is here, I say, okay, send an email, create an email, and then I call this cheat sheet delivery. So this is just a name for yourself. The contact will not see this. And then you can select a template. So by default, you have a bunch uh, of templates, some default templates that you can use. I created my own templates. I've also linked to these in the description below if you want to get started with those. But then you can just create your own template and then you can say, use this template. And then I can say cheat sheet for, and then here I say, okay, first name, save, close. And then this is the sender details. So this is my name. And then I only want to change my email address here. And then I click continue. So then the email is created. So you see that this is what my default template looks like. And then obviously you can just write the email. You can say like, hey, John, uh, here's the cheat sheet you asked for. And then here is a link over that. Now then you can go over to next. Then there's a bunch of extra options over there. So here you see like a basically a little summary, your subject, your pre-header text from message name, uh, the address that is related to your business. And then there's also some options. So you have open and retracking, link tracking, reply tracking, Google analytics. So those options are also there. And what I also think is handy is that there's also a spam check. So active campaign will basically check a few basic things. Like if you're not using certain phrases that are often triggering spam filters. And then you can just click finish and then you just click here, save. And then we have our email. Now, then what I want to do, conditions and workflow. And I just want to say here, wait until, and then we say, okay, wait until has opened, for example, has opened cheat sheet delivery. Then we click save. And then we say for up to two days. So this is also a bit the automation that I showed you earlier in this video. And then over here we say, okay, conditions and workflow. If else, we want to split the automation based on the condition. So we want to split it based on somebody has opened the email. Now we say add. And then here you can add a follow up email for people that did not open it. And here you can maybe add an email for people that did open it. So yeah, this is how you create a simple form and a simple automation. So just to show you that it's fairly easy to use. I think the hardest part is probably uh, to come up with like a solid strategy that really works well for your business. And then I want to talk about what support is like at Active Campaign. I know that other reviews don't talk about this so much, but I actually really think this is super important because if you just get started with a new tool, you're going to have lots of questions and then you really yeah, want them to respond in a timely manner, right? So I find active campaign support really, really good. Like they always reply super fast, usually within 24 hours. So when I just got started with active campaign, I had lots of questions and they always responded really quickly, but also were really trying to help. So they did not have like any of these copy and paste answers uh, that some of these other email service providers are using just to save some uh, time on support. Like I really think this goes a long way. So yeah, support really great. Now then we're going to talk a bit about pricing. So Active Campaign, as I record this video, they have four different plans and every plan, as you can see here, has lots of features. So you have a light plan, a plus plan, a professional plan, and an enterprise plan. So I personally think that most online businesses, they really have enough with either the light plan or the plus plan. Like you obviously have to check out this page yourself, see if there's something that you really, 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 really need. But for example, with the light plan, you already have access to all the automation stuff that I showed you and much, much more. You can also use the forms. But one thing that I think is really a bit of a shame with the light plan is that you cannot use conditional content to hyper personalize your emails. So if that is important to you, then definitely go for the plus plan. And also if you want to create landing pages with active campaign, then also go for the plus plan. And maybe also one important thing to mention is that only the plus professional and enterprise plan come with a CRM, so a customer relationship management system, basically. So if that is really important to you to manage all your contacts, then go for that. But personally, I don't find that super duper important. So if you don't need landing pages, you don't need conditional content, then I would say go for the light plan. You can also always upgrade later on. So yeah, pricing itself really depends on how many contacts you have. So you see over here, if you have 500 contacts, then the light plan is for example, nine bucks and the plus plan is 49 bucks. 
So it, it quickly goes up like here, if you have a thousand contacts and the light plan will get more expensive, the plus plan funnily enough will just stay the same. And over here, if you see, if you have two thousand, two and a half thousand contacts, then the light plan is 45 bucks. The plus plan is 99 bucks and so on and so on. And there's also a really big difference um, if you bill, if you get billed yearly or not. So if you pay monthly, you pay about 30% more. And if you pay yearly, you pay about 30% less. So what I would recommend is to start out with a monthly plan, really make sure this is the right tool for you. And then when you know like, hey, I'm going to use Active Campaign probably for at least the next year, then switch to yearly billing because it can really save quite a lot on a yearly basis. Now then pros and cons, I think this is my favorite part of any review. So pros of Active Campaign is really good deliverability, which is really important because there's no point in using a new service provider that has bad deliverability. So I just wanna quickly wanna show you uh, an automation that I've been using uh, last year. So this is like an evergreen newsletter. It has lots of emails in it. So that's why I thought it's maybe a good example to show you. So as you can see here, so this is more like an archive right now, but like I have lots of emails in here. And if you go over here, a few emails, then we can see the open rates of my emails. So you see here 29%, 46%, 42%, 51%, 53%, 52, 42, 53, 44, 48, 43. So yeah, as you can see here, I get amazing open rates uh, with Active Campaign. Open rates obviously depend on lots of things, also like what kind of subject lines you write, what kind of content you send. But just in general, my emails get opened really, really well with Active Campaign. So I thought it's maybe good to share. Now then, I think yeah, the pricing is quite friendly, especially if you just get started. Like imagine you have maybe a thousand contacts and then if you would start with the light plan and you only pay 29 bucks a month. And even if you pay yearly, then you pay 25 bucks a month. So I think that is really great. Then webhooks. So this is not something I talked about before inside the review. It's a little bit taggy, but I wanted to mention it because myself, I find webhooks really important because I can really easily integrate basically any tool on the planet with Active Campaign because Active Campaign has webhooks. So if you find it important, it's there. Now you can automate absolutely everything. I think that's freaking amazing from the moment that they opt in to the moment that they're going to convert into a customer. And now support, I also mentioned it earlier, is really fast. So that's also really great. Now then the cons. So I think for example, Active Campaign is rather slow to use. So sometimes when you wanna create an automation, change an automation, change an email inside an automation, you sometimes really have to wait 10 to 15 seconds before the page is loaded. I have a really fast internet connection, so I have no clue why it's so slow, but I've been experiencing this for the last, I don't know, two years, and I really find this pretty annoying. So this for me is a really big con. Then forms are pretty basic. So I just showed you how to create a form. And I think these forms are actually quite great. I've been using them also on my own website, but they're pretty basic. You, for example, cannot do any AB testing or something with them. Now, then uploading images inside your email. So if you wanna use images inside your emails, you need to upload them somewhere. You can either upload them to Active Campaign to use them inside your emails, or just upload them, for example, on your website and then use the URL um, to display that image. And Uploading images in Active Campaign is really not a nice experience because it just gets super messy. This uh, interface looks like it's built 15 years ago and it's not so great, I think. So if you're going to use images inside your emails, I would just recommend to upload them on your own website and then use them inside your emails that way. An active campaign, like while I said it's like medium easy to use, I think it can also be a bit overwhelming because there's so much possible with automations itself. Like it's really exciting, but there's so much possible. So it can be a bit hard to know where to get started with all this marketing automation stuff. So I also have some tutorials about this on my YouTube channel. So you can also check those out if you want to. Now then the conclusion, should you use Active Campaign or not? So I think it's pretty clear from my review that I absolutely love Active Campaign. The powerful automation possibilities are great. It's fairly easy to use. Pricing is great for beginners and the cons are very minimal. So what I will do, I'll put my affiliate link for Active Campaign in the description below this video so that you can try Active Campaign out for free. And by using that link, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you. And if you have any questions about Active campaign, maybe about any of the features, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible.